Or what kind of software do you prefer to build? The kind that users fall in love with or the kind that users never see? Well, for the longest time, I did the second option, building back-end systems for big companies like the BBC. But after a decade, I realized I'd made a big mistake. Because while building APIs and setting up databases is important, it's invisible to users. And I wanted to connect directly with users. And I wanted to build software end-to-end. -end. And to do that, I had to learn front-end. And that was scary. Fa fast forward to today, and I'm working on my fifth app. I'm connecting with users directly and I'm earning money along the way. So this is my approach to learning front-end as a back-end developer. And there's no perfect tech stack here. It's just getting out of your own way and having more fun building software. Now, the other day, I was frustrated because I wanted to create a slideshow of YouTube thumbnails for a video I was working on. And it took me ages. I had to screenshot the thumbnails and then animate them together. And I thought, hey, this would be cool if this was an app that I could just use to do this automatically. And then I realized I've got some of the skills to make the app come to life. And anything that I'm missing, like how to do a fancy fade in, fade out effect in my slideshow, anything else I can learn along, along the way. And because I had felt the frustration of having to do this work manually, and I can envisage how this solution would look as a deployed web app that you just type a YouTube handle into and then it generates a slideshow automatically. That was super motivating. And that's all you need to do to get motivated to, to learn any skills, to learn the necessary front end skills to, to bring a vision to life. You just need the desire to make that thing. And when I had that desire, I spent, one, I spent one day building the first iteration of the product. Like I actually got something working by the end of the first day. The second day I was polishing. And right now I'm just doing a little bit of stuff to get it ready for production. Maybe it, Maybe it takes you a lot less time, maybe it takes you a lot more time, but it doesn't really matter. If you've got the motivation to, if, if you've got the vision and the desire to see this thing come to life, then that really is all the motivation you need to, to start learning what you need to know. And if you don't know any front end yet, you don't need to sit down and learn everything about a particular framework. You just need to know the little bit to, to take the first step of building your solution. And then just take each problem as it comes and only learn what's necessary to overcome that next problem. And when you do that, like what was a fear of learning front end it kind of becomes effortless as you see your creation come to life now the other thing that people get stuck on and people obsess over for some reason is is using the perfect tech stack And what I see people do is, rather than think about finding a, a tech stack, which is basically a suite of languages, frameworks, tools that allows them to be the most productive, to enjoy building software 
um, the most that they can, they instead get fixated on choosing the tech stack that's going to impress other people. It's going to give them the most creds when they talk about their tech stack online. And that might end up being a tech stack that makes them incredibly unproductive and makes them hate building software. <laughs> so that's just stupid. And the way I've approached this is I've been through several different tech stacks. <clears throat> I actually, six months ago, thought I was, I was using the best tech stack. It was my own kind of homebrew framework that I'd created um, on AWS using Vue.js. And I even like shared this tech stack with other people if they wanted to use it. A couple of people did. But then I did a bit more digging and I basically discovered another framework that did everything that I had done in a homebrew way, but automatically faster, like a lot less code and a, in a much more structured way. Uh, the tool that I'm using now, like I say, don't get fixated on the tool, but the tool I'm using is called SST. But it doesn't matter what you use. I mean, I've got a quote that I'm going to share with you here from the guy that created the Ruby on Rails framework. The pinnacle of web development ergonomics is late 90s PHP. You write the script, you FTP it to a server and instantly it's deployed. Instantly it's available. I mean PHP was the first language I used to write an interactive website and people are still using it today to create software on the internet that makes millions of dollars. It still works. And if PHP is the solution that works for you, screw what anyone else thinks and just use PHP. If it's a fancy new JavaScript framework that works for you, then fine, but don't let anyone tell you what to, what to use. And also don't let anyone tell you that you should you should just pick the first just choose a tech stack and stick to it forever if you choose a tech stack and it doesn't work for you it doesn't make you feel like you're building fast and it doesn't make you enjoy building software then keep iterating until you find something that does and maybe nothing's ever going to be 100% perfect but You'll know, like I know now, that when something clicks, it, it makes you feel powerful as a developer. It makes you feel like, you know, as long as you've, you've got the skills to, to execute, that you can like, just turn an idea into working software incredibly quickly. So find the tech stack that works for you. Now, like I said, I'm building my fifth web app now. So I, I've got four other web apps that are deployed on the internet. The code's on GitHub. And I love this because I'm building my knowledge with each web app that I create. I'm creating little features here and there, and if I need that feature that I created in a previous web app, if I need it in my current one, I can just go to the code, copy and paste. And as you build more web apps, like your, your skills improve. Things that previously were a bit scary to you, like, I don't know, how to, how to integrate a buy button with Stripe. When you haven't done that before, it's, it's a bit intimidating. Once you've done that, once the code's in GitHub, you can just copy and paste, and that's just another thing that's taken care of, and you can start like 
going a bit deeper and like creating more advanced features. Like I've, I'm for the first time now creating a dark mode, light mode toggle. I thought that was going to be tricky, but it was like maybe an hour's work. A few prompts from ChatGPT. So my advice is to start building the first your first app and if the experience isn't as enjoyable as you thought it, w it should be if if you don't or if the outcome isn't how you expected like you don't sell any SaaS subscriptions or you don't get as many users as, as you want just keep going because not only are you going to improve your skills you're going to have a portfolio of, of work on the internet that you can point to if you ever want to use that to apply for a job or get freelancing work. And the thing I found is that as you realize that you can take these ideas that you randomly had and then turn them into a, a software solution. Like my first tool was a a tool to visualize how your YouTube preview is going to look and to brainstorm different ideas for thumbnails and titles. And I use that all the time. If I hadn't built that, I wouldn't have considered the idea that I'm building now, which is the YouTube thumbnail slideshow tool. So as you build things, you increase the trust in yourself that you can you can build more things and like you you can start to take on bigger challenges and I believe if you can keep iterating and keep doing this improving and taking on those bigger challenges that's really that's going to compound and that's going to give you the eventual payoff that you want whether that's users whether that's just building an impressive portfolio or starting to earn an income from SaaS subscriptions. But you need to give the compound effect time. So keep iterating and keep building. So if you can find motivation by building things you're excited to build, And if you can just find a, a tech stack that works for you without trying to impress other people. And then if you can keep going for long enough, you're eventually going to have a few web apps under your belt like me and you're going to be able to say, hey, I've built these things. List them on the internet, let other people see them. And then, you know what? <laughs> People are probably going to be interested to, to look at what you've built. Give you some feedback on what you've built, suggest improvements. And maybe some of those people will become your first users. And then you're no longer just a back-end developer hiding in the shadows. You're building software end-to-end -end that can connect with people and can help them solve problems and potentially improve their lives. And for me, that's what it's all about, and that's pretty exciting. So, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.